But you're, you're as much a beer sort of educate, educator consultant now as you are a writer, I, I feel like. You do yeah. talks everywhere. So which one do you feel like you more naturally fit into? You, you mentioned you didn't mean to write about beer. So where... Yes. Well, I wanted, to be, I wanted to be a writer since I was nine. Okay. Uh, I didn't want to write about beer, but um, <laughs> I wanted to be a writer since I was nine. I love the process of writing a book. If I could, all I'd do is... Well, no, if I could, in terms of writing, if I could, I'd just write books. Because I love the process, I love the journey, I love the... The, 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 the stuff you find out and, and the shaping of a, of a long narrative in, into something compelling. Um, I never expected that I'd be standing on stage in front of thousands of people talking. Naturally, I'm an introvert, um, but then when I get on stage, uh, I can relax and, and, and be an extrovert. Uh, and, I, and some of the events I do, it's become its own thing now. And it's really nice that that's, that that's happened because uh, I enjoy the quickness on stage. You know, writing's a very slow process. Uh, and for that talk I did today, I had no script. I didn't know what I was going to say. Uh, I just got on stage, like, right, go. And We'd drunk the beers about 20 minutes in, hadn't we? The yes. beers were gone quickly. <laughs> <laughs> they were good beers, and I didn't have Very any good. long drony stories to tell between them. <laughs> so in your beer travel books, Three Sheets to the Wind, I said the one I've sort of read, yeah. and, read, read and loved the most, I think. Um, yeah. You almost come across as a beer novice in that book. I You're was. very much learning in the process, like through yeah. the process. So, I mean, so that I assume that was that was true to the fact that you really didn't know a lot about beer when you were writing those there's books. There's two things. There's two things there. One is I think that in, in terms of writing style, uh, I think it's better instead of standing at a lectern going, "Let me tell you everything I know." Mm. I think it's more narratively appealing. If you're going, I'm going over here to look at this, do you want to come with me? Look what I've just found out. Yeah. So that's how I like to write sure. anyway. Uh, but yeah, um, when I wrote my first book, I walked into a pub. I knew, I, knew a, I was fascinated by the social and cultural aspects of beer. I didn't know that much about the ingredients and styles and how it was made. That, that came with writing Three Sheets to the Wind. And what was fascinating was doing my first ever beer sensory training and beer evaluation training. Uh, a few weeks before I went on some of those trips. So I just sat and had my palate trained for the first time, and then I, then I end up in Belgium, yeah, drinking amazing. Belgian army beers for the first time in Good my life. Timing. And then going to America and encountering West Coast IPA for the first time, when I've just upgraded my tasting equipment. And it was just like, wow, this is incredible. Yeah, so it was, it was good timing there. Yeah, but how important was the knowledge and the education to enjoying beer? I think it helps you get more out of it. Uh, I try to not, 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 not to be too judgmental about it. So when I'm running tasting events and teaching people how to taste beer, I always make a point of saying, look, if you want to just swig this straight from the bottle, if that's how you want to drink your beer, fine. You know, I'm not here to judge. But if you want to get more out of it, and if you want to really kind of get the full sensory experience, it helps if you do and know a few of these other bits and pieces. So it's very much uh, at the person's at the person's own behest, really. Yeah. But a bit of knowledge, uh, a, a bit of thought, just helps you get more out of it. And, and I think what's so great about when you do that with beer is something that you may be taking for granted your entire life, and you learn a bit more about it. You go, oh, I never knew that. That's really interesting. Yeah. And suddenly it opens up a lot more. And that's yeah, what it yeah. did with me, and that's what I like doing to other people. Absolutely. Uh, where they come up, they'll read one of my books, or they'll come to one of my tastings, and they'll walk away going, shit, I just learned quite a lot without even realising it. Do you think with knowledge comes uh, like a difficulty to enjoy beer? Like, do you find yourself enjoying less beers because you know what a good beer should taste like? I sometimes get a bit weary of it all. Uh, I sometimes think this is all I do. You know, I'm, I'm sick to death of this particular style of beer. Or, or and, and whenever that happens, there's always something that comes along that just makes you sit up again yeah. and makes me feel like I did on those first visits when I was doing Three Sheets to the Wind. Yeah. It, it might just be sitting in a pub and getting a perfect pint of cask or it might be um, uh, going to a tasting and encountering a new weird and wonderful bottle beer from the other side of the world. But there's always something that brings me back. But yeah, you do get jaded and that's why I drink a lot of wine at home. Um, so your newest book has apparently taken you 20 years to write, the one about working's yes. men's clubs. Is that normal to, for a book to take you that long to write? No, no, <laughs> it's not. It's very unusual. Um, but I pitched that book about five times to different publishers over the years who all said, um, yeah, I can see why you would want to write it, Pete, but the only people who are going to buy this book are old people in the north of England and they don't <laughs> buy books. So you can imagine how that goes down at literature festivals yeah. in the north of England when <laughs> yeah. I'm there with my book. Uh, the book's been shortlisted for prizes, it got adapted for Radio 4's Book of the Week, and so uh, 
I was right. Camera must love it. Camera love it. Um, <laughs> Uh, the number of people contacted me when it was on the radio yeah. uh, sharing their stories about it. it that book touches something really deep and it's kind of the reason people thought it wasn't going to work as a book is the reason I had to write it the reason people thought it wasn't going to work as a book is because it's about this untold story of something northern and working class and that's exactly why I wrote it and yeah. it's really resonated yeah. so uh, it was worth the wait yeah, and why did you want to write it so much I, I, I guess if you can encapsulate it very quickly why are working men's clubs or these working clubs like so important to the uh, fabric of beer culture? Or, or yeah, because they they used to sell masses of beer. They used to be worth about twenty five percent of the entire British on trade market. Um, but they weren't just places that sold beer. They were places that educated people, that freed people, that, that gave showers and baths to people that didn't have them at home. That gave. Um, sort of end of life care to people they were the welfare state before the welfare state existed right. and on top of that they they were the kind of uh, foundry for most 20th century light entertainment when I was a kid any comedian or quiz show host or singer uh, on the telly had come up through the club circuit uh, and, and so they allowed working class people to become stars mm. uh, as well as get cheap beer but is this more nostalgia, or do you feel like they still have a place currently? They're, I mean, they're, they're dropping like flies at yeah. the moment. Uh, the, the membership's ageing, they're not relevant to young people. Uh, but I'm a member of a club in North East London now, and we're getting about 20 or 30 young people joining every week. And people are joining because they want to feel like they're part of the community, they want to put some roots down, having just moved into the area. They're joining because we've got nine full-size snooker tables. Uh, they're joining because we serve cheap beer um, and enjoy because the building's magnificent and old okay. and young people love a bit of nos there's, there's nostalgia for stuff you remember there's nostalgia for stuff you never experienced uh, and clubs are, are great for that so you, you don't have to be an old guy from Batley in order to uh, appreciate the grandeur of the faded dilapidated grandeur of a working men's club <laughs> if there are any other aspiring beer writers then who, who maybe are aspiring to be beer writers other than other writers uh, what would you suggest in terms of key things to get right in the early days yeah I think the important thing I, I do get people coming up to me who think there's a shortcut uh, or a trick you know it's like what's the hack for me to, to just get there quickly yeah. there isn't one if you want to do it you, there's, if you want to do it there's no point unless you're passionate and you want to keep doing it um, and it's like if you were you know if you're training for a marathon you'd go right I've got six months of getting up every day and running and running when I want to and when I don't want to and I'm going to feel good at the end of it and then there's bits of it where I'm going to feel like why am I doing this writing's the same if you're not going to do it every day forget it if you're not going to practice and take risks and get better then don't bother yeah. uh, and, and my thing is just keep doing it read everybody else read outside beer um, the, apart from the obvious thing of Michael Jackson my main influences as a beer writer are people like Stephen King and um, um, uh, George Orwell and you know a bunch of people David Foster Wallace it, it's not just about knowing hops and going well I've met this brewer or I can recognize mosaic uh, at 10 yards it's not about that it's about storytelling uh, it's about people more than anything else otherwise it's just flavor names it's just tasting names I like that I'll just leave it there yeah <laughs>